Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Robertson Media Center at the University of Virginia. Uh, today, we're going to provide a basic introduction to Audacity. It's a free and easy-to-use multi-track audio editor and recorder. Uh, this video series is intended for beginners and only covers enough to get started. So for more details, check out Audacity's tutorials at the link below. We'll start with a tour of the interface, then we'll cover how to import audio. And then next, we'll look at the basic editing techniques and tools, how to record with an external microphone, and then how to export a file to turn in. Audacity is open source, which means it was developed by an online community with the intent to distribute it for free. You can use it on a Mac, Windows, and Linux, and I recommend you download it on your own computer so you don't need to return to the G Lab. Today I'll be using version 3.1 of Audacity, which includes some major changes to the program. If you have an earlier version, 3.0 or earlier, check out our previous tutorial series at the link below. And here is Audacity. You can see here. Uh, first notice the menu bar. We've got Audacity, File, Edit, Select, View, Transport, Tracks, Generate, Effect, Analyze, Tools, Window, and Help. Windows uh, excludes the Audacity menu pull-down and also the window pull-down here. On top of the window itself, you can see uh, we have three buttons over here. We have Close, Minimize, or Hide uh, the window, and Full Screen. On Windows, they're the same. They're just over here and in a slightly different order. I tend to avoid full screening the software and also any other open source software that I tend to use uh, because it becomes rather unstable and kind of glitchy. Uh, it's also easier to access your other windows. Uh, for instance, here it's easier to drag and drop to import uh, like so. And I'll undo that. Uh, and access all your files over in the Finder window or in um, Windows It's Explorer. Um, I also have a Word doc open here. Or I, Google um, Doc, and that way I can access anything that I need to reference uh, over here. I always encourage uh, users to have multiple reference windows for a better workflow. So below these, we have some other buttons to notice in this little panel here. We have uh, pause, play, stop, uh, skip to beginning, and skip to end, along with record. When you are editing, uh, you cannot make changes while in pause, so we recommend that you hit stop after previewing your um, project, uh, which is over here. You'll notice that if it is paused, uh, this will be highlighted, and you'll also have it down here in the status bar as paused. I'll give you an example, so paused. These are somewhat self-explanatory, right? Play moves through your project through time. Stop means that you stop entirely. Skip to beginning if you're kind of far along in the project. You want to go back to the beginning, skip to the end. If you want to skip to the end, if you have a super long project, these can be useful. All right, next we have the uh, record button. You can see it pops up here with R, although um, we recommend recording to a new track. You can add a new track by go to tracks, add new. I'm going to add a mono track. And here I can record directly on it. Uh, if you have nothing here, it's also OK. You can hit record, and you can see that it's going to record um, directly onto a new track. However, if you, for instance, um, have it selected here, and you start recording, you'll see it's going to record directly after. So we recommend recording something onto a new track, which is the second one here under, uh, as I hover, uh, record new track, which is Shift R. So if I type in select a place, for instance, here, and I say Shift R, you can see, you see, that see it's I'm going to record, record a new track um, directly under directly onto a new this track. One. See, it's going to record directly after. Next, we have the audio levels. You can see they have a little symbol here. We have the uh, the microphone and a speaker. Uh, if I were to click here, you can see I'm, I start monitoring from the microphone itself. Um, and that's up here actually as the input recording levels. Uh, over here is the playback recording levels. So if I were to hit play, R, you can see that you it's going to record. record a new. Uh, you can see that they show up over on the right side there. So, so the two different sets of levels. Below that, you'll see there's those same symbols. You have the speaker and the microphone. Um, this is going to be your volume for 
recording. So if this, I'll click to monitor again. I wanted it to be louder. You could see I could turn that up or I could turn it way down if I wanted it to be a lot softer. Um, so this is your input recording uh, level. Uh, this over here is, right here is the speaker, the playback uh, volume. So if you want it to be louder coming out of your headphones or your speakers, uh, you can turn up the playback volume there. Over here, it should look pretty familiar. You have cut, uh, copy, and paste. Uh, you have command or on a PC, control uh, X, command C, command V. Uh, those you'll be using quite often uh, in this workspace. Then we have two more, slightly more complicated buttons uh, right here next to paste. Uh, so this one is the trim outside button. So if I make a selection, you can see it pops up and I'm allowed to do it. A trim audio outside selection. And this one is the inverse, which is silence, which is basically trim inside uh, the selection. Trim outside will only keep the selected portion of the audio on a track. Um, so whatever you have selected, it will keep and everything else it'll get rid of. Uh, the silence, which we'll actually use a lot uh, in this tutorial series, is a lot more useful. Uh, it essentially trims what's inside uh, and leaves the space there. So if I hit this, you can see it gets rid of that thing, but doesn't actually remove the space. I'm gonna un Command Z, I'm gonna undo that. We'll cover that more uh, in, in the next video. Right here, we have undo and redo. Uh, if you make a mistake, uh, undo here is Command or on a PC, Control Z. And then you have an array of zoom controls. We only use a couple of these um, very often. The most useful, of course, is plus and minus, zoom in, zoom out. And then next to that, don't change this. This is the uh, playback speed. Uh, unless you have a really good reason, leave that at 1x. Below this, you'll find the inputs and outputs. You can see, you can leave that on core audio. This one, same symbol over here is the microphone. Uh, I have the Yeti stereo microphone because uh, selected because that's a little bit better than the one on my laptop but you could switch back and forth if you'd like. Uh, here you can cho choose between mono and stereo if you have those options with your microphone. I do, but I'm recording in mono. And then uh, here you can see the same symbol over here that you've seen a couple of times. And this is your playback device, the output. Uh, in this situation, the output uh, here is to uh, my recording device so it can hear all the things that are played back. But in your case, it's probably going to be external headphones or whatever speakers you're using for your device. We'll talk about recording with a microphone in more detail uh, in a later video. Okay, now let's talk about the timeline. That's this portion here. Uh, up here, you can see that this top bar is numbered in seconds from the beginning, which is zero. Uh, and so if I were to move my selector over to five and select here, right? I am about five seconds into my project from the beginning. So you can see that they go, the numbers go up in the number of seconds in your project. I'm not quite actually at five. If you look down here in audio position, you can see I'm at 5.39 seconds, 0 0.39 seconds. And so um, you can watch as I hit play. Or hit the play button, right. see that it's going to record. record a new track uh, and stop. You can see that um, down there the audio position changed as it was playing. So you can see the exact location of your uh, selector. So instead of the play button, I could hit spacebar. Spacebar is another way to start playing your audio. So again, if you watch down over here in the audio position, hit play with the spacebar. You can see that it's going to record a new track um, directly. Hit the spacebar again is to stop, not pause. Another way to play is, is if you hover over on the top of this timeline, you can see this little green triangle. So I'll hit stop, and I'm going to click again at six seconds. Record a new track um, directly, directly onto a new And there you can um, see you can play very specifically, or you can click and either press play or press the space bar. On the far left over here, you can see that I have an audio track. I actually have two audio tracks, and you can have as many as you want. And in most cases, you're going to use quite a few. Uh, very rarely will you do an entire project on a single track. You can see that they're playing at the same time. So if I were to select here and press play, you can see that it's going to record a new track um, directly. Under they're both playing simultaneously. So you don't hear them as separate tracks. We're just keeping them separate so we can kind of organize uh, 
and see the individual parts which we can mix together later. When you export, it'll all be one thing. If you'd like to add a track, you go to Tracks, Add New, and then you can select either a mono or a stereo track. In this case, you can see over here that I am recording in mono, so I will select a mono track. We'll talk about the difference between mono and stereo uh, a little bit later. So back up to the top, you can see this is my kind of options over on the audio track. Um, mute right here will silence the whole track. If you don't want to hear it, you can kind of uh, keep it silent. Uh, the inverse is solo. It means it's going to silence everything else, all the other tracks except for this one, which can be really useful if you just want to hear this one part of something that already has a lot going on um, and maybe hear maybe what's going wrong with it uh, there on solo. You can see they gray out when they are muted. See how solo, mute, mute. If I unclick it, they all uncheck. The X in the corner uh, will uh, close and delete everything on that audio track. So I'll do it down on this one. Be careful you don't have something you want on there because it will be lost. And it may be better to actually mute it. So if I don't know if I want anything on here, I can mute it and then I can just kind of uh, minimize it and then it can just go away for a while and I can decide later if it's something I want to keep. This drop down menu uh, has many options here. You can see including change between mono and stereo or uh, you can move a track up or down in the uh, stack. So if I click move track to bottom, you can see it moved it down to the bottom of the stack and I will move it back to the top. Note you can name the tracks. This is really useful if you start having a lot of audio tracks and then you can name them based on something in the content um, like talking about audio tracks or voice recording part two. The plus and minus buttons here uh, will set the gain or the, or the volume of the whole track uh, up or down. So you can see if I slit this way, um, it's going to go up and down in decibels louder or quieter. Uh, L and R are simply for the left and right speakers in a stereo mix. We'll get into that a little bit later, but that's called panning. And that way you can make a whole track sound like it's coming from a particular direction to the left or to the right. The select button selects the entire track for you, so you don't have to you know, zoom all the way out and try to select it all with the selection tool. And the bottom arrow uh, minimizes the track, which kind of makes it small and go away uh, when not in use so that the other tracks are easier to see. So open that back up. And then down here on the bottom bar, you can see there's a few things down here. Most of the defaults should be fine uh, on this project rate. So the sample rate of your project, 44.1 uh, kilohertz is, should be good for most projects. Um, that's the default. Um, however, if, you, if you're an advanced user and you want to make something with a slightly more professional uh, sampling rate, I wouldn't recommend going over 48,000, uh, but I'm going to return this to 44.1K. Uh, leave the snapping off. If you want to see where you are in a particular project, you can see here's the audio position. It says 8.336 seconds, and that's where I'm located here. Uh, right next to that, here is uh, the start and end of a selection. So if I make a selection, it's a similar thing to the audio position. Uh, you can see it starts at 5.84 and ends at 7.79 here in this selection. And finally, there's a status bar down at the bottom. You can see it says stopped. If it were paused, it would say pause, play, play, recording. This is just telling you what's going on. All right, so I'm going to minimize these two so they're out of the way and start importing. So the easiest way to import audio is to drag and drop from the Finder or from the uh, Explorer on Windows. So I'm going to drag and drop Spooky Number One in here. And you can see it just shows up on its own track automatically. You can also import a file, import audio, and say open. Audacity, again, automatically imports files onto a new track. And you can see it names it the file uh, that you imported. Now I want you to notice what this imported file looks like. This shape is called a waveform. Uh, essentially, a waveform is a graph of loudness over time. 
Uh, the unique shape allows you to see when sounds are happening, when they begin and when they end. This is super helpful because you don't have to listen to know when something is happening. You can just see it. For example, if you recorded an interview, say this was an interview, uh, you know when the pauses are because the waveform is flat. So you can see, I didn't, you know, I, this nothing said here, then words, 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 and then there's a pause here between. This is where you can make cuts. So if I make a selection, I could cut that by pressing delete. I'm going to undo that. So this is what my voice looks like. You may also notice that each track uh, can have either one or two waveforms. So if I open this one back up here, you can see this one has one and this one has two. What's the deal with that? This is the difference between a mono and a stereo track. As you can see, it's listed over here on the left side. See this one has stereo, this one's mono. Uh, it does have to be expanded far enough, so I click this and then I can see this one's mono as well. Stereo simply means a separate right and left speaker, uh, which mimics traditional human hearing. That is, having two ears allows us to locate where sounds are coming from based on when the sound waves hit the left and right ear. For instance, if the sound hits the right ear first and then the left, we know it's probably coming from the right. So that's how we kind of locate sounds. So you would record two inputs for a single stereo track, one for the right speaker and one for the left speaker. Mono tracks only record a single input and thus equal for both speakers on playback. So it doesn't mean that it only plays out of one speaker. Uh, it'll actually play out of both equally unless you, of course, change the panning. This actually matters immensely because you need to select what kind of track to create. Also, some microphones allow you to record in stereo uh, or mono, uh, like this one. And also, any audio you import could be mono or stereo, depending on how they were recorded. So you can see the thing I imported was in stereo. What I recorded is actually in mono. OK, so let's take a moment here to discuss how to navigate in this interface. During editing, you'll absolutely want to zoom in and out. Uh, you'll want to see small details at some times. Um, and then other times, you're going to want to zoom out and see all the different pieces and how they're working together. Uh, so you have to zoom in and out. And in order to do this, it's really best to learn some keyboard shortcuts. Uh, it's going to save you a lot of time and effort. But to zoom in, you hit the Zoom In button over here. Or you can press uh, Command or Control on a PC 1. To zoom out, you can press the Zoom Out button above the timeline, or it's Command or Control 3. To view the whole length of the project, uh, you can select the Fit to Project Width button, which is right here, or you can do Command or Control F. If you want to zoom to a custom width, uh, you need to make a selection, and then you can use this button, uh, which is Fit Selection to Width, or Command and Control E and then it zooms in to that particular selection. I know what you're thinking. What about the Zoom tool in the toolbar? That looks cool. I don't recommend you use it because these tools are actually going to be much easier to use in combination, especially with the keyboard shortcuts. So I'm not even going to go there. Don't worry about the Zoom tool in the toolbar. Now, so far, these have all been horizontal zooming in the timeline, which I mean along this axis here. <clears throat> what if you want to zoom this way, right? If you have a bunch of tracks here and you want to see them all at once, well, you have a few options. You can um, do the most direct one, uh, but it's time consuming. You can resize each track. So you can grab the bottom here, you can move it up or down, and then you have to do that on all of them and get them all uh, the right size. Or you can minimize tracks. You could say, oh, I don't want to deal with this one or this one right now, and then I can just really focus on this track here. I think the best one for me uh, is fit to height. So if you maximize all these windows here, maybe make them a little bit bigger to dr dramatize it. So if you go to view track size and hit fit to height, which is uh, shift control or command F, watch what happens. Oh, wow. So they're all aligned specifically to fit into that window. So if you have a bunch of tracks, you can get them to all fit uh, in one window, which will save you some time. It's very handy to uh, 
know the shortcut. Again, Command Shift F or Control Shift F. Great. Well, that's a good start. Uh, we're going to pause for a moment and come back in the next video talking about basic editing.